In April last year, a litre of unleaded 95 petrol would have cost you more than 14 rand a litre. Now it costs in the region of 10 bucks, a level last seen in 2012. It's a reduction of more than 200 rand on a 50 litre tank. You fill up four times a month. That is 800 bucks. Two cars and a family filling up four times a month. That's 1,600 rand. That's a whole lot of money. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. And we're going to find out this evening what you should be doing with the money you're not spending on petrol. Joining me, Craig Sher, Head of Discovery and Best Product Development, and Tendaini Machimuli, who is the consumer economist at Liberty. But first, we sent our team out onto the streets to find out what you were intending to do with your money. Let's see if we can change your mind. Are you feeling the relief of the petrol price cut? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure uh, I, will feel, I will feel it uh, in the next few weeks to come, yeah. Honestly not, because the taxi fares are not going down. To somewhat, yes, yes. Um, you can feel it, uh, especially when you have to pour your full tank. You can see the difference about, what, 50 to 100 rand difference. But then um, over a period of a month, I mean, the effect is very small. I mean, we're talking a difference maybe of about 200 rand or 150, which in any way, that money you're going to spend on other things. Are you going to be saving the money? or investing it or is it going to go to other expenses? It's most certainly going to go to other expenses. It's going towards other things, honestly. That's what it's going to, to my son's school and everything. You know how it is with the economy. It's very tough at the moment for everybody. Uh, stock market and that, uh, being, being, being uh, so young, I haven't, don't really uh, have uh, any, any knowledge of it. But uh, yeah, it's something to look at, definitely. I mean, a lot of people make a lot of money from it. So, um, yeah, but I just haven't got down to actually looking at that side of it, yeah. Well, at this point in time, it's going to go to other expenses. It's not uh, such a big amount to go into savings or anything right now. Oh, well, ideally, I would like to invest it, um, but if, uh, the stock market's also come off quite a bit. Obviously, SAS has come down quite a bit. So, yeah, I'll just invest and... Uh, yeah. I'm putting it uh, in savings and uh, paying my bond a bit more. Other things have gone up, so it will compensate for the, the price increases in inflation in other areas. But uh, hopefully, maybe, hopefully some will be put aside for, and saved in the future. It's petrifying. That's what you're thinking about, where to put your money. That's the real concern as to where it goes next, I suppose. Craig Shirt, Head of Discovery and Best Product Development. These guys are ripe for the plucking. Um, firstly, the guy with the stripy shirt. Being from Discovery, you should say he should buy a seat to put his kid in and strap the kid in in the back seat. Most important, you've been warned on that one. Um, second one is people are just not interested in investing. I mean, it's, it's, this is a saving. It's money that you were used to being parted from, but it's just going to other investors. And, and that's the reality, isn't it? I, I mean, I think that's right. Uh, people don't you know, wake up one day and say, you know, I think today I'm going to wake up, the petrol price is lower, let me take that money and put it into savings. Savings is, is really something for the, the future you, and you, you generally discount that. The son of uh, coronation, be careful. Uh, <laughs> no, no, they, <laughs> it's, it's, that's, that's not right. Um, so I think, I mean, it, it, it happens every day. We kind of have this feeling that today is, is what I have to worry about, and the future will deal with itself yeah. uh, later on. You know, we always like, uh, from my, my own point of view, kind of pass all the problems off to future Craig. And, and present Craig will, will deal with the good stuff now. No, and, that, and that's the big problem. And when we look at a tin, Danny, as, mm. as this amazing saving. And I did a calculation mm. of 200 bucks, 208 rand on a 50 litre tank, because we've had four rand 16 a litre. Um, okay. That translates to 208 rand. Mm. That translates then mm. to 800 and something rand a month per driver in a two car family mm. that drives a lot. Mm. 1,664 rand. People say, oh, it's not enough money to invest. That's it's a it's pretty it's decent it's amount. Out. But Bruce, I'm not surprised because I was actually looking at that insert and saying this is typical of South Africans. We are a nation that every cent that comes, you push it on to saving. I'm looking at... We, we push on to spending. Oh, to, to spending, spending, sorry. Yes. You look at a household uh, debt to disposable income, still well over 70%. Now, that's a symptom of what we've seen. I mean, that's, that's the evidence of what we've seen in that insert. So we have been consuming that 1,600 you probably were not consuming it because you had disposable income to spend. Part of it you financed by credit. 
Now go and reduce your credit card debt first. Yeah. And and then and let's see, let's talk about saving going forward because I can tell you a lot of those well not those ones on the inset, a lot of South Africans finance current consumption from credit. Well, absolutely. So 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 before we even talk about saving, please use that money to reduce your debt and at but least nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's tonight. going to listen, but I mean <laughs> you got you got you got to I've got I've got to say it. Uh, I've got to <coughs> say it. we need to use that reduce your debt to disposable <coughs> income because this is not going to last indefinitely. And in the meantime, if you can, after a few weeks or so, if you get used to that, at least start uh, putting mm. aside for that. That's, that, that's, 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 that's a straight. crucial thing. I mean, Craig, mm. when you look at it, when you first start any investment, whether it be in a retirement annuity or whether it's your pension payment that comes out of your salary, mm. it's money you don't miss. Mm. Now, we've not missed, maybe we did miss the 1,664 Rand as a family, but we lived without it. And now that it's back in our pocket, maybe because it's drip fed into our pockets over the last six months, we've got to gradually become used to the fact that there's that little bit more disposable income. So at the forecourt now, we fill up the tank, we can buy chocolate, um, you know, and which we might not have done before. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, people don't, as you say, they don't, uh, you know, they're they kind of expending less, I suppose, which, uh, which, which is, uh, you know, because of the petrol price decrease. They're not saving more. I, I mean, I would say uh, the best thing to use on your, on your savings now is to actually go spend it, but spend it on something like a financial plan. You know, go pay for advice. You've got this money in your pocket now. Uh, you maybe, maybe this 1,600 rand, the saving that you've got uh, on that over time. We, we don't know how long that's going to last. The petrol price may go up another time. Well, but and now the finance minister in the next budget is going to put add an extra lump of tax, frankly, um, uh, on, on petrol. And so he's going to erode some of that. The oil price will go up eventually. Exactly. So, so the, I mean, best case scenario is you'll take the money and, you will spend, and you will, you will, you'll save it. I don't know if that will always happen, as, as we saw. Um, but in reality, while you've got this relief today, maybe take some of that time, work out what is the best way to structure your finances going forward, the best way to pay off your debt, mm -hmm. um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you can now. And then you've set yourself up with a financial plan and sort of the value of that financial plan could far exceed uh, this, this little drip into your savings mm. that you could have over Absolutely time. right. I mean, the Finance Minister in his budget speech will announce tax-free savings plans officially. Mm. Um, already, you know, you guys, um, no doubt, are, are looking to position yourselves in yes. that space as well to ensure mm. that you get a piece of that particular pie. Mm. But there are hundreds of investment opportunities mm. at a couple of hundred bucks a month. Yes that you could be utilizing as a result of this money, which is somewhere yes. in, in your financial system, in your in, in internal financial system. And that's why I'm saying, Bruce, I mean, it's not like we expecting you to save the whole 1,600. I mean, if you can set aside one car driver per family saving, um, that would go a long Absolutely. way into, in terms of saving and building a cushion for what is coming. I mean, we're talking about a, a saving that we're getting on a disposable income, which actually, uh, given what's happening in the economy right now, might not end up being a saving because it's costing this economy more in terms of load sharing. It's not quite offsetting um, the, the whole yeah. saving, but it's going some way towards that. So building a cushion for that. But imagine now. how much worse it would be, Craig. Imagine how much worse it would be. So you're mm. sitting in the traffic idling at 6 mm. o'clock in the evening when you're yes. trying to get home to your family. Mm. Um, and now you're idling at 14 bucks a litre. Mm. Now you're idling at 10 bucks a litre. It's a lot more palatable trying to find a silver lining to this dark cloud <laughs> of load shedding. Um, but it, it, how do we inculcate mm. in ourselves and in the people around us a sense of financial responsibility for our future selves? Um, I think that, that is the challenge. It's one of the biggest challenges I think we have in South Africa. If Go and volunteer at an old age home for a month and ask yourself if you want to be there um, when you're 80. I think that would be a good way of doing it. I uh, <laughs> don't know how many people will, will yeah. do that, but uh, it's definitely the right thing to do. Um, we, uh, uh, I mean, the key is to try to, you know, increase the level of savings, and that's why I say, I mean, maybe the right thing to do is to to, to s sort of set aside that money and get a financial plan yeah. together. Once you've sort of you're on that treadmill of saving, then it just kind of continues over time. You know, you kind of set up your RA. It's a recurring debit order. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. But, but it's amazing watching the lights come on in people's eyes, isn't it? I mean, tonight when, you, when people start investing for the very first time, and especially mm. if they start investing in markets that are going up, mm. um, it's horrible when it's the other way yes. around. Then you've got to counsel them differently. Mm. But when people start uh, saving or investing, and investing particularly where they're getting above inflation returns, mm. and suddenly they watch this magic of compounding happening, mm. 
it's like Christmas, Easter, and every other gift-giving holiday, including Valentine's Day, thrown into one. So that's why I agree that part with Craig that used that money to get somebody to pay for advice because not everybody understands the concept of compound interest. I might think that I'll save a million rand when I'm 50, and it's not. We don't understand. It won't be the same as if mm. I started saving when I was 35 at 100 rand a month and so forth. So paying for financial advice for somebody to break down those concepts in a way that I'll understand. This is actually what I'm setting myself up for. This is what I'm setting my kids up for. We we if 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 we don't win ourselves off of uh, instant gratification. Uh, using any and everything in our means, within our means, uh, in, uh, in primarily credit to consume now and not think for the future and not think that uh, if I'm 50, 65 and so forth, am I going to maintain mm. my sen the same standard of living? That's the problem. Instant gratification is yes. just so absolutely important. I mean, we are in the age of instant gratification. If mm. the laptop doesn't come on when you push a button mm. and it takes 30 seconds to warm up, mm. I it's a waste of a day. Mm. Um, We've we got to wire ourselves differently, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, we, you know, I suppose one of the benefits even that you could get out of long-term savings, call it uh, you know, like an RA, for example. You put in an RA, you put your money aside today, you invest it in an RA, and you can access it when you when you retire. So it's sort of forced, it, it, you know, keeps yeah. your money for a long time. The uh, the benefit of an RA is you get a tax deduction, which, you, which is immediate, and so you do actually receive a big portion of the amount you put in back. At the end what, of the financial what's year. so glorious about the RA process, and the, the, the RAs are open to lots of criticism, but retirement annuities as a principle, mm. you're investing the full 100 bucks that you would have paid 30 or 40 bucks away yes. in tax now. You're mm. getting the full benefit of that 100 buck investment over a period of 20 or 30 years. Absolutely. You'll pay tax on it at the end, mm. but you've had the growth of that extra money that you would have frittered away on tax. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's just these, these little things that we, we kind of take for granted. Mm. Um, what, uh, what savings message are you hoping that will come out of the finance minister's mouths and budget? Um, Mouth, he's only got one. He's not two faced. <laughs> he's a nice guy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't have a specific, uh, you know, strong view on that. I would, I would say that he, you know, you know I, I suppose, I don't know what he would say. I mean, what do you want him to say? I would like him to encourage people to, to save more. Uh, you know, I don't know how it really manifests over time and to drop their, their level of, of, of household debt. Um, having said that, it's tax relief for savers, tax relief for pensioners. Um, I think that's right. I mean, he's, he, we've got these tax-free savings account. We've got these, uh, the, you know, this tax deduction that's supposed to be increasing on on RAs, uh, hopefully next year. Um, there will be all these uh, these incentives to help us to help us save from a tax. We need to be have a carrot and a stick, perhaps. Really. I mean, the, the oh. trade unions dug their heels in on retirement reform this year. We need to push that agenda, don't we? We do. Um, but 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 just to pick up on what Craig was saying. I think South Africans are much better with contractual saving. So if it's saving that I can withdraw at will, we're not good at that. Can you make it affordable? That's the question. Yes. Because contractual savings have <laughs> historically have been so yes, expensive. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, it's been expensive. And I, I think that's why maybe part of that is going to be addressed by the pension refund uh, okay. reform. So, so that I think will help us some way. We certainly need the help, all the help we can get. Craig mm. Show, Head of Discovery Invest Product Development, and also Tendani Machumuli, who is a consumer economist at Liberty. Yeah, it's, it's really worth thinking about. I mean, it's drip fed into you, back into your back pocket. Suddenly, the car that cost you 800 bucks to fill is now costing you 500 bucks to fill. Don't lose the opportunity, um, because I promise you the finance minister is going to take some of that opportunity away from you very soon. Thanks for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, good night and goodbye.